So today is a really interesting video today because uh, this pretty much caps off the trifecta of lenses that Sony had dropped over the last couple of months. Now I did the 10 to 20 power zoom lens, which was an F4, really light, really compact, fabulous lens for the Sony ZV-E10. I recently just dropped the 11 millimeter F1.8 autofocus lens, probably one of the best wide angle lenses you can get for the APC range right now. Now this is the 15 millimeter f1.4. Now what makes this, you know, significant? Well, the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4 finally has a really interesting competitor. Sure, there's the Viltrox 13 mil f1.4. That is a wider focal length. If you're looking at something like this, this is like an almost a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent lens. This is very similar, actually, it's very similar to the lens. I thought I had the 35G Master on there, but 35G Master is here. You're looking at the 24 millimeter G Master lens right now, F1.4. This is pretty much the APS-C version of that. So we're gonna be talking about this, but we're also gonna be comparing it kind of to that 16 millimeter Sigma lens because uh, I think this one might take the crown. Let's get into it. the 15 millimeter f1.4 lens this is an incredible lens and what are you saying <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, so this is Lake Tekapo and this is a pretty interesting bridge you got the observatory in the background and this famous church right over there that we're going to be visiting I'm going to be switching between this lens and also the 16 millimeter Sigma lens because uh, they're very comparable and this lens is a really great one from Sony. So the Sony 15 millimeter f 1.4 G lens is designed for the APS-C camera range. It is a 22.5 millimeter full frame equivalent focal range. The aperture goes from 1.4 all the way to f16. It has a rounded seven diaphragm blades which gives you nice smooth bokeh. It has a full dust and moisture resistant design, really low focus breathing. It has a minimum focusing distance of 20 centimeters, a 55 millimeter front filled thread, all in a package of 219 grams. Now the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 has a maximum aperture of F1.4 and a minimum aperture of F16. It has a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent focal length. It has a nice weather sealed construction, nine diaphragm blades, which gives you really nice smooth bokeh as well, a 67 millimeter front filter thread, a minimum focusing distance of 25 centimeters, all in a package of 405 grams. Now, what would you actually use this for? Now, you can use this for a whole bunch of different situations. Real estate videography, real estate photography, astrophotography. You could utilize this for travel videos and photos. Uh, you can even utilize this for vlogging. It is just wide enough. Sure, there is active stabilization in the Sony ZV-E10, which will crop in quite significantly. Let's, let's go test that out. So we have the 15 millimeter lens on the ZV-E10. Now there isn't any in-body stabilization right now. There's no IBIS and there's no active steady shot, but uh, we're gonna put this through the gyro and this is what it looks directly through the gyro data in Catalyst Browse. So uh, the shutter is cranked at 1 800 of a second. So it does actually help the gyro data perform better in Catalyst Browse and uh, I'm gonna show you what it looks like with active steady shot on because there is a significant crop when you do so. So you can see this is with active steady shot on so there is a very significant crop so it might actually be worth utilizing the gyro data in post production but it is an extra step so some people don't wanna go through that so this is still pretty good. Like you can still see yourself uh, and you can still see what is around you as well. So, uh, you know, what? it depends on what kind of vlogging style you have, but is this going to be enough? What do you reckon? Is it too tight? Too tight. Is it too tight? Oh my God, it's blown out. There you are. What do you reckon? 
der ist schwieber. Oh, so bright. Can you see enough in here? Selfie. So I'd just like to jump in also, if you do want to support my channel, this is graded with my LUT. Uh, and my LUT is in the link in the description below. Like I said, you do get something out of it, but you also support my channel. And I absolutely thank everyone who has purchased my LUT in the past or is going to purchase my LUT. So thank you, you are supporting my channel. You are making these videos happen. You know, I don't earn much money from them, but it is a little bit more that I can put towards newer cameras that come out and I can purchase those new cameras. And then obviously, you guys will get free videos, which is great for all of us. But uh, let's get back into the video. Now I did have the pleasure to use this in New Zealand and it was an incredible lens, especially when I had the 11 millimeter lens as well and paired with the Sony ZV E10. Now you can obviously put APS-C lenses on full frame. So if you do have full frame cameras, you can put it into APS-C crop mode and utilize APS-C lenses. Now with the Sony a7 IV coming out now with 10 bit color, and uh, that high resolution, put into APS-C crop mode, you have a really, really powerful APS-C camera. And uh, paired with this lens, you're looking at a really nice wide angle, 24 millimeter full frame equivalent, approximately 24 millimeters. So if you do have the 24 millimeters on full frame in 25 frames per second, then you go to 50 or 60 frames per second, it will crop in. So chucking this on there will pretty much give you very similar focal length Sure, the depth of field will be a little bit different because depth of field does change. It's not exactly a 1.4, turns into about an f1.8, so it's a little bit different when it comes to that uh, depth of field. But the amount of light that comes into the sensor, f1.4, you're looking awesome. So if you did miss that video on my Sony a7 IV and 24mm G Master lens, the link will be in the description below so you can check that one out. And you know the cons of you know throwing it into slow motion on the a7 IV. If you do have the a7S III, uh, the FX3, the FX6, the, uh, the Alpha 1, you won't have any of those issues. So what was your best experience in New Zealand? Oh. Put you on the spot. That's a hard one, yeah, because I haven't really thought about it. I would definitely say the helicopter ride. I think that was something. The what? The, ha <laughs> the helicopter. Yeah, the helicopter. What's a helicopter? Same thing. <laughs> uh, so that was it. Uh, was it Fox Glacier? And um, Franz, no, Franz, Franz Joseph. Joseph. Franz yeah. Joseph Glacier. It's yeah. one of the last two, I think, remaining in New Zealand. Yeah. I think it's. Uh, it was incredible. Yeah, that was awesome. Something that you wouldn't normally do, so that was really cool. Would have loved to have bungee jumped. Someone was too scared. Cut and cut. <laughs> So the next step is to have a look at the image quality. So we'll start with the Sigma 16 millimeters. Now you can see we're wide open at f1.4. We'll go right into the center and it's really sharp, high contrast. And you can see there is that barrel distortion on there. There is a profile corrections in there, but it doesn't fix it too much, but we won't be using it today because the Sony 15 millimeter does not have a profile corrections in Lightroom as yet. But we go out to the corners and you can see it's actually very sharp in the corners, wide open. So it's a very solid performance from the 16 Sigma lens already. Stop it down to f1.6, obviously still sharp, out in the corners, nice and sharp again. And uh, obviously f2, nice and sharp in the middle, obviously more contrast. Uh, f2.8 has probably reached its peak sharpness there fantastic performance and we stop it down to the minimum aperture of f16 and you can see it's a little bit soft with a little bit of lens diffraction which is expected and out in the corners it is slightly soft but it's still extremely sharp and great performance from this lens now we'll go over to the sony 15 millimeter lens you can see the difference between the field of view of 16 millimeters and 15 millimeters right here now in the corners we can see vignetting right there but we'll jump directly into the center tack sharp high contrast we'll move out to the corners very sharp that is very well done high contrast but you can see obviously there is a lot of barrel distortion very comparative to uh the sigma but the sony probably has a little bit more barrel distortion there we stop it down to f 1.6 there obviously tack sharp high contrast Corners are sharp and it's going to be obviously sharp at f2 and f2.8. 
It looks like peak sharpness there at f2.8 and at f16, the minimum aperture, same again, lens diffraction, a little bit soft, but the corners actually hold up quite nice. But overall, it is much of a mushness when it comes to image performance between these two lenses. Now, I guess one of the major benefits with this lens compared to the Sigma 16 would have to be the functionality. So you do have the aperture ring, you've also got the manual to autofocus switch and also a customizable button. So that can come in handy in a lot of other different situations. If you do want to obviously switch it to manual focus or utilize the aperture with just that aperture ring. Yeah? There's rocks down there. There's rocks down there? Yeah. Well, it's the ocean. What do you think of this lens? <laughs> Good. Good? Like, it better than the Sigma lens? Yeah. She said yes. Buy it. So, you can see the Sigma lens, it is very basic. It pretty much has nothing it just has that focus ring sure the focus ring is quite large it's very smooth has that 67 millimeter filter thread which is like what i said before uh, it handles all my nd filters quite well and uh there's absolutely no other functionality to it but uh when it comes to autofocus they are pretty comparable in terms of speed and uh yeah the performance are about the same the Sony lens is $748. The Sigma lens is half the price at $374. So it would really come down to budget. Sure, the Sony is slightly better build. It has a lot more features on it. And you know, it does wear that G badge. So, you know, the resale value will probably actually be decent. Overall, I really think this lens is an absolute home run. And if I didn't have the Sigma 16 millimeters, this would obviously be that choice because it is absolute quality. You have the autofocus, the manual focus switch, custom button, you have the aperture ring. So it is fully specced out and it has that G quality glass in there. So it's really sharp, wide open. The chromatic aberration is quite low. The ghosting is quite low. It just performs overall really, really well and pretty much stacks up like the G Master lenses and uh, for APS-C obviously, and uh, yeah, I guess we're kind of hoping and waiting for a really high-end APS-C camera with 10-bit color. So hopefully 2022 or 2023, we're gonna be seeing Sony catch up because Canon has that new R7 camera and that has 10-bit color. Yeah, hoping Sony will bring out something that will compete with that thing. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. That would be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And uh, click that bell notification so you can be notified when my next videos come out. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Let's get it.